Hi folks, this is uh, Nate Tyler and I am back with part two of the Temperature Probe tutorial. I was asked a really exciting question, so let's answer it. All right, and I am going to focus in on the question here. So, hi, is there a way to include the Arduino Adafruit header and CPP libraries conveniently? It's a hassle to copy them. I am missing always some libraries and it's a pain to copy all the .h and CPP files. Well, that's a great question, Kiteboarding Polly. I really do appreciate you asking me. Now, it took some digging, but I found the answer after being generously provided uh, some potential solutions by Caitlin Stefan. And let's let's hone in on my solution, all right? And I'm just going to highlight it. All right, so let's go through it. In short, when adding a folder path under the libraries panel of the S function builder, I selected INC path as the tag for both uh, C users blah 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 one wire and C users blah 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 Dallas temperature. Okay, uh, now let's show you what it means. So over here you have some libraries or some library files, okay, that were copied into the project folder. Now if I go over to the Arduino libraries uh, folder paths themselves, you can see where I copy the information from. So just for A to B comparison's sake, Dallas temperature dot CPP, Dallas temperature dot CPP, Dallas temperature dot H, Dallas temperature dot H. Utilities, utilities, one wire dot CPP, one wire dot CPP, one wire dot H, one wire dot H. So you can see exactly where the information came from. Well, the question, or the objective of the question, is how do we call these, dot, these CPP and dot .h files from their root folder location? Okay. Uh, well, the answer actually is a lot more straightforward than what many of you would think. So uh, let's just get straight to it. I'm going to stop the simulation, and I'm just going to delete the the dot .c pp and dot .h files from my project folder. Do I want to move it to the recycling bin? Yes, yes I do. All right, and I'm going to double click and go into my S function builder. Okay, so I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger for visualization's sake. I'm going to go into the libraries panel, like I said my uh, solution at the very beginning of this video. I'm going to right click in the tag column and I'm going to simply click on add path. Well, there's two paths that we know of. There is one wire and Dallas temperature. So let's start with one wire. All right, so the value is going to be the URL. It's going to be the root folder location, okay? And the tag, we double click on, change it to INC path. All right, well, we have one more uh, root folder we need to account for. And that is the Dallas temperature. That's INC path. Now you have to select INC path, otherwise, after all is said and done, this will not work. Now, what does INC path mean? Okay, so INC path, and what I did was I accessed the link that uh, Stefan, Caitlin provided me, and I simply went down, read through the document, and I found what INC path meant. It specifies the include search paths for header files and source files. So CPP and .h files, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to build the wrapper again, okay? And just for everyone's understanding, this wrapper.cpp, this is the old one, and we will be deleting it and updating it. Okay, so function successfully created. Beautiful. I'm going to save this as I exit out. So we're going to delete the old CPP uh, wrapper and we're going to update the new wrapper. Okay, so we're going to write extern C in front of the word void everywhere in this file. This will allow you to call external functions located in uh, the .cpp and .h 
uh, files that you're pointing to in each Arduino root folder. Okay, so long story short, we updated our, dot, our wrapper. Now we needed to rename the extension from .c to .cpp. All right, now everything looks good. Now we're gonna go back to monitor and tune. Start our simulation. It's really exciting, folks. The, uh, the power of this concept is uh, frighteningly powerful and uh, creatively free all at the same time. Uh, so as an added bonus, I have uh, set up a little camera here. So here's the temperature probe. You can see my hand is very warm, so I'm only gonna hold it for a second. Temperature continues to rise. Okay, now temperature is starting to fall because the ambient temperature uh, in the room around it is beginning to cool it off. It's going to uh, resettle near uh, 72 degrees because that's what you can see on the actual temperature probe I have very close to it. All right, uh, so at the end of the day, that's that's pretty much it, folks. And I mean, it's it's a really exciting concept. It's very empowering because now you can create your own custom blocks and you don't have to copy all of the files into your project folder location every time you want to use them. You can simply point to the uh, repository on your computer where that pathway is located that contains the .cpp and .h files themselves. All right, enjoy.